All right, I'd like to welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Lee, to the stage. Uh, he's joining us as our Meet the Editor-in-Chief for Materials and Manufacturing. A little bit of information about that journal is available here on the screen. And I've got a couple questions I've already prepared for Dr. Lee, but I'm going to make sure I pay attention to the chat button, as, or I'm sorry, the chat thread as well. I noticed that, um, I just wanna make sure everybody could hear us. Okay, it looks like, looks like sound returned for Kim, so that's good. How are you doing, Dr. Lee? Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. You are very welcome here, uh, Angela. Thank you so much for the invitation. Yeah, here. we, we always love doing Meet the Editor-in-Chief segments for our journal collections. I, I find it's really valuable for the mobility engineering professionals that read the content articles in these journals to hear from someone such as yourself. Um, before we get into the journal, can you tell us a little bit more about your current role at the FCA and your background as it pertains to materials manufacturing? Okay, uh, yes. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Angela for this uh, precious opportunity that I'm able to, uh, to be here to promote our and, and to introduce our journal here. So uh, once again, I'm the senior tech fellow in durability at the FCA US LLC. I've been with the company for about 34 years and uh, I like to be remembered as a, a person of the loyalty because uh, this is my only company I'm working with and this wow. uh, expertise, durability, is my uh, my love. And I've been married to my lovely wife for 40 years. So uh, I like to be recognized yeah. as a person of the loyalty here. <clears throat> so uh, personally, I graduated uh, uh, with a PhD degree in the structural engineering from the University of Wisconsin-Madison uh, in uh, 1988. And uh, since then, I've been with the company uh, for almost 34 years. And uh, my primary uh, job responsibility is, uh, is try to provide the technical support to make sure that our vehicle products are durable. I'm going to explain to you what I mean, they're durable here. And also that uh, is try to advance the new technology uh, in durability area so that we can implement to the to uh, to our product right away. So those are my two primary uh, role in the responsibility. So durability is, is closely related to the uh, materials and the manufacturing here. So that uh, when we talk about the vehicle, is is uh, is durable meaning what? So we need to. Uh, it's my job is try to help our design team to make sure that our vehicle product able to what experience no issue here, no issues for the design life, usually 10 years, 15 years, no issue, major issues. And uh, and under very severe customer usage condition here. So uh, I'm the expert providing all the support from the design, validation, reliability assessment, and also the manufacturing process here. So they all closely relate to, together here. So that's my role in the responsibility. Wow, that, it sounds like you got a big job. <laughs> Yeah, huge jobs, and uh, I think it, it helps though that you're passionate about it as well. Uh, that that's obvious as you talk about it, and for as long as you've been in the field. Um, wonderful. So, what made you want to get involved as the editor in chief for the SAE International Journal of Materials and Manufacturing? Well, that's a good question here. Uh, so, uh, personally, uh, I'm the person of the. I like to learn. And I remember uh, Albert Einstein uh, once say that, uh, well, uh, when you stop uh, learning, you stop dying. Mm -hmm. Stop learning and just stop dying here. So that's a key here. So that uh, I always like to keep me busy learning, stay abreast of the new technology here. So that's from my personal prospect passions. And uh, from the from the SAE journal's perspective here, I, I like to lead uh, this com uh, this journal here to be the best of the journal, best, most cited journal here. All right, because uh, my our competitor is the SM SME journal, Journal of the Materials and the Materials mm -hmm. Engineering and the Technology, Journal of the Mechanical Designs, and the Journal of the Manufacturing Engineering. So those are the SME journal. They are my benchmarking. They are my competitors. I want to become the best and the, as compared to them. So that's my passion here. And uh, the reason I get into the, the this area is because I've been with the associate editor for the past 10 years. And uh, last five years and uh, appreciate uh, 
I got a referral from the Professor Muhammad El Sayi and from the uh, mm -hmm. Eastern Michigan Universities. His recommendation, so I, I can become the, I have the pleasure and honor to become the, the editor in chief. So that's how I get into here. So I hope I can lead the journal. Absolutely. Okay, to become the best. I think you're already on that path. Um, yes. It sounds like you're a lifelong learner. I'm, I'm also a lifelong learner. I, I totally get your passion behind wanting to just continually learn. Were there any articles published so far this year that you were excited about? Yeah, there's so many uh, nice articles here. And uh, like, uh, for example, uh, the, the one of the multiple objective uh, optimizations uh, papers uh, cited by the Dave uh, before the minutes ago, that's the one of the fantastic uh, paper. The second one is, uh, is uh, I'd like to uh, recommend everybody to read is uh, this, uh, what do you call the, give me a second. So uh, this, uh, what do you call the review and the assessment of the uh, stress life uh, based uh, multi action fatigue uh, theory here. So this is a fantastic uh, review uh, papers. And uh, if you get into the fatigue durability area, this is uh, the paper you need to uh, read. All right, so this is a, this is a fantastic Excellent. paper. Excellent, I, I did just push out yes. a link for everybody as well uh, that pulls up all of the journal articles so far for 2022 for materials and manufacturing. If you wanna take a look at it, that title uh, that he just referenced is available. Um, one question I had for you, and this has come up in some of the other past guest speaker segments specific to the journal as well, is um, I noticed several articles kind of span across industry sectors, you know, aerospace, ground vehicle, commercial vehicle. Can you tell us more about how this journal and the technologies around materials um, have those cross-functional aspects? Yeah, unfortunately, this is always overlapping the area, technical areas, the uh, among all, all kinds of journal here, especially aerospace and uh, the ground uh, ground industry mm -hmm. here, ground transportation industry here. So uh, the, the thing here for this, for the ground uh, transportation industry, and uh, I think that we try to learn as much as uh, technology that the, from the aerospace, for example, here. It's a, issue, it's a mutual uh, learning uh, uh, opportunity here. So for example, like a materials, aerospace is, uh, is, uh, is excellent in what? in the lightweight materials, like uh, uh, magnesium, the aluminum and uh, composite material. So those kind of technologies are going to be, uh, going to mm -hmm. be used by our area, especially uh, 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 OEMs. Right. And also manufacturing, this uh, the aerospace is, uh, is leading mm -hmm. what? Additive manufacturing techniques and uh, all the joining technique here for the aluminum and the, uh, the similar materials. Those kind of technology and the, we, we gradually uh, try to adopt in here. Why? Because what fuel economy is our OE is our is more like uh, the areas of interest for us. We like to uh, reduce the vehicle weight so that we can improve our fuel fuel economies. So that's our goal here. So that uh, so to answer your questions, uh, always overlapping here, but uh, our it's more like a mutual learning, overlapping and the mutual learning too, and uh, they learn from our solid, robust. Uh, design in the process in the same year all right so uh so always overlapping and uh that's i love that that you're learning other. from each so. other um and we're seeing that more it's a trend that i've been yeah. seeing in the two and a half years we've been doing this uh webinar just in the past year more industry professionals such as yourself are seeing the same trend um are there any journal articles future uh, special articles or anything coming out that you're excited about Uh, let me see, uh, the article, there's one article going to be published is, uh, is, uh, regarding the smart manufacturing, the technology here. So this, uh, this is one of the, the trend here. So smart, uh, manufacturing technology through the, what do you call the, the disrupted, uh, digital technology here. So it's, uh, this is a new areas of interest here. And uh, also there's a uh, more paper focus on what? AI, machine learning, okay, and how they use those kinds of the innovative technology here in the, in the, in the vehicle design. So that's the future trend and uh, fantastic. And I think the one or two papers uh, in the, into our review, uh, peer review okay. uh, process right now. So, uh, yeah, if they got accept and uh, 
I think audience may be able to see that those kind of papers. Interesting. Well, we look forward to reading those as well. Um, so there is a question, uh, Jean Denis. He asked, "Does this journal does this journal accept articles in the field of runway and aircraft de-icing and anti-icing?" Wow. <laughs> Uh, I think this journal is more focused okay. on what okay. ground trans transportations and uh, industry here. So uh, for the aerospace, and uh, we like to refer the okay. people to a different and journal. And Kim Martin's in the uh, audience, so maybe yeah. she could also answer that if there was a journal that would make more sense for that type of uh, a topic. And it looks like I just wanted to make sure we got these questions answered before I continued. So it looks like some people want to join your peer review process. And thank you, Kim, for providing that information as well. Um, that kind of leads into my next question. Um, for those engineering professionals listening, how does one go about submitting their research to this journal? And can you describe what that process is like? Yeah, so uh, th there's a website and uh, talk about and uh, mm -hmm. how you submit the paper in the website. And uh, once the paper gets in the website, and it depends on the category of the, the paper here. So the paper would be route to our uh, corresponding associate editor, and then the editor is going to uh, send out the, this uh, uh, submission to, uh, to the, at least the 304 for the peer review process here. And then once the feedback comes back, the associate, associate editor is going to make a decisions, make a recommendation, to accept or reject. And after that, if accept, then they come to me and uh, I'm going to review and uh, approve. And uh, then that'll be the, uh, com that'll be the complete uh, publication oh, process here. Yes. So uh, regarding the where to submit this website and uh, you should be able to, uh, I will post the website uh, later. And so that everybody, uh, if you are interested in submitting submit a, a paper to our journal, and uh, then that's a website. And can, uh, Dr. Lee, for. what are some of the other technologies you'd be interested in getting those submissions on? Well, and uh, once again, and uh, from the auto in the, uh, automotive industry, and uh, I think there's a four emerging uh, mm -hmm. uh, areas here. The first one is so mm -hmm. about electrifications. The second one is the connectivity fuel economy and uh, autonomous driving. Those are four areas. So those four areas are closely related to what? Our journal, the scope, mm -hmm. they all falls into the scope of our work here. So that, the, for example, uh, connective, uh, connectivity here. So the vehicle and the vehicle, how they connect each other. So we're looking for what? Uh, so looking for some kind of paper in this area, like to say, hey, uh, how you uh, get the, the customer usage condition here? information from the connected vehicle, how the vehicle, uh, how the customer drive in terms of the coronary events and the goes to a rock roll event, what's the why open throttle events. So those are things able to what see uh, go through this kind of connected vehicle here. So those the, the reason I'm interested in this looking for the paper in this area is because what this closely relate to the design target setting here. So when you design the vehicle you need to know how to design the vehicle to meet the customers requirement. So how we know the customer requirement? The only thing is what you need to get the information from the customers. So connect a vehicle is a great opportunity for our auto industry to find out the, how the customer operates the vehicle here. So for example, uh, electrification here. So what kind of material to use for battery? So and the, the, the material technology in battery areas and uh, also the gearbox and uh, this is the the, the mechanical system is the same, but how we going to design, how we how we going to, uh, what's the application of those? Those those are the interests to me here. Most importantly, most importantly, mm -hmm. AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning is another emerging technology here. I like to see more papers on this area here. So instead of the routine try to get the material property out, is there any way we can use the AI and the machine learning in the material area material? characterizations and the manufacturing system here. How we do that? So uh, I can, I, I, personally, I already see many applications in the manufacturing area using the AI to the, to this, yeah. what we call the smart manufacturing here. So I'd like to see more, okay. more paper in this area here. In the meantime, in the meantime, I'm looking for a qualified 
associate editors in those areas I mentioned here. By looking for the volunteers, try to become, try to join us as a team here. Try to uh, review and the on that here. note, when you join as an associate editor, uh, what because you were an associate editor, what were some of the benefits you found, not just from expanding your research knowledge, but did you find any benefits from that collaborative aspect as well? Just a lot of different perspectives. Yeah, the, the most benefit I, I think is, uh, is networking here. So uh, being the associate editor, I'm able to associate with any, any authors and, uh, and my peers. So that is more like the networking. Uh, that's the most benefit to me. The reason for, for saying that it's because of whenever I have any issue here, the, in the in the practical issue here, I call them, say, hey, how you resolve this one here? They are, they are willing to share the information with me. So this is a great forum for us to exchange all the information here, all right? So as long as you don't reveal too much, too much uh, any confidentiality of your mm -hmm. information, of your company here. Excellent. Um, Pranav asked, so we were talking about what sort of journal articles you'd like to see, and we did touch on the submissions you're getting now. Um, he had a specific question. What kind of papers do you receive from the industry on this topic, materials manufacturing presently? And do you receive any um, or are all the papers from research and academia organizations? So I guess he had a two-part question. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let me see. Uh, majority of the paper all came from the industry. So uh, at this moment here, our journals still mm -hmm. receive uh, many papers. It's more like an application related paper here. So uh, in the future, I, I like to see more okay. contribution from the academias here. All right, and uh, that's my goal here. So the, that's the major difference between the SME journal and the SAE journal here. SME journal is more like what more academic paper, mm -hmm. academic oriented paper here. For SAE paper, SAE journal is more like what application here. I like yeah. to have the mixture of the both, 50-50. That's my goal here. So that uh, that's the reason. And uh, our associate editor and the, and the your team here is important. To try to promote this kind of journal here. So the, hey, uh, we are not uh, only looking for application uh, paper here. We're looking for what. Some, some paper from the academia. And what's All the right. benefit? Yes. Can you explain a little bit of the benefit of having that mixture between the application research aspects and the academic aspects in one journal? You were Did talking you about how uh, you want this journal to have both those academic aspects of it um, and then also the application aspects of it. What, yes. what are the benefits of having that together under one journal? Because uh, if you 100% of the, the uh, paper is more like an application, it doesn't mean, doesn't give you uh, too much, uh, more like, uh, it's not, not much uh, innovative uh, mm -hmm. ideas behind here. I like the mixture of that because uh, uh, some pure, pure theoretical papers and uh, and nobody uh, apply it. Nobody understand how to apply it. That that is is pointless here. So I'm more like a practical person. I like to uh, learn the new theory, and I uh, hope that I can apply the new theory to our product application. That's a, that's a breach mm -hmm. here. That's a breach of this journal here. All right. And uh, I don't want to see uh, too many uh, like a high percentage of the research paper in, in my journal because uh, it may be uh, not. Uh, no, uh, it's not very practical here. And uh, and I like to see that like 50, 50 chance. Here. But right now, I think it's most of the case for journalists, like 80% of the paper are application mm -hmm. journal here. 30% is a, it's a theoretical So it's sort of paper like here. focusing on the today and the tomorrow, would you say? Okay. Yes. Excellent. Um, yes. Those are all the questions I had for you. Let me scan. Uh, Pranav said, thank you for answering. And it looks like you have a couple people interested in um, kind of getting involved in the journal. So thank you, Kim, for providing all of those links. Um, 
I wanted to also just show everybody, we, you can continue the discussion with Dr. Lee um, and chat with an expert. So if you're unfamiliar with that, it's hosted through Member Connection. And instead of it being a live interview like it is today, which, you know, of course is wonderful to be able to get your Q&A live, uh, you can also pose additional questions, learn how to get involved with the journal by continuing the discussion through Member Connect. Uh, so I did include the link in the handouts for everyone. Dr. Lee is going to make himself available uh, for July 21st through the 22nd, so starting tomorrow, um, to answer any additional questions about this journal in particular or how to get involved. Uh, Dr. Lee, do you want to leave anyone or the audience with um, any final thoughts on getting involved with the journal? Uh, yes, and uh, I... First, first of all, and uh, I like to acknowledge. Okay, first of all, uh, the success of the, this journal here is uh, highly dependent on our SAE staffs and the fantastic support, and also my uh, peers from the associate editors. So they did a fantastic job and uh, put together a wonderful, wonderful the uh, journal here. So uh, I like to uh, give my thanks to all of them. All right. Secondly, I like to thanks. Uh, the audience's support here, and uh, I wish you continue to to support this journal here by promoting this journal, by submitting submitting your papers to this journal, and uh, that will be the my my uh, encouragement to everybody here. Yes, so, thank, thank you, you so much for joining us and for volunteering your time today and the next two days in in Member Connect. Uh, I hope most of you will take advantage of that for sure just to learn more about how to get engaged and even just reading some of the articles published this year. Um, Dr. Lee, I'm really looking forward to some of the future articles that you described earlier, and I hope I hope we can connect again for another Meet the Editor-in-Chief segment in the future. Yes, for sure. Yeah, it's my pleasure, and uh, thank you so much, and nice meeting you. Uh, it was Angela, nice to meet you and, as well. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you.